half on Sports Center. The weather outside is frightful, which means swinging isn't delightful. Neither is throwing, just ask the Red Sox, nor driving. No, I'm fine. Not my car, but I'm fine. How fine will Tiger Woods be in day three of the Masters? Can the Cubs find the target, let alone their first win? And will the Knicks find a way to avoid mourning another loss? Get out of that cold weather and run on home, because we're checking you out from everywhere on SportsCenter next. Hi again, thanks for hanging out with Sports Center. Alongside Linda Cohn, I am Stuart Scott. Ahead on the show, a frightening crash involving Jill DeFerrin. We will tune up for the Derby at the Bluegrass, and you'll find out which is higher, the number of baseball games postponed, <laughs> or the lead Tiger Woods owns at the Masters. Close call, and if you consider that more than half of the games are washed out, then Tiger must be kicking the field. For all the people who said, I'm Tiger Woods, and I admit I'm in that group, no, we're not. First of all, few of us could shoot a first round 40 on the back nine at on the front nine at Augusta, and none of us could follow it up with a back nine of 30, a front nine in round two of 34, and a back nine in round two of 32. No, he's Tiger Woods, 12 under in his last 27 holes, prompting six-time Masters champ Jack Nicklaus to utter, "Quote: He's playing a type of golf we are not familiar with." End quote. Woods with a three-shot lead entering round three. That three-shot lead wouldn't last long because it'd get bigger, much bigger. Discussing strategy with Fluff, his caddy. On the seventh for birdie, representing Tiger five under through his first 11 holes. That takes him to minus 11. Colin Montgomery trying to catch Tiger. Last month, Colin Montgomery said he'd like to play with Tiger in a round. Maybe not. I don't know if he was intimidated or what, but his chip shot not even close. He shot a two over 74. David Frost on 16. Out of Ray's Creek. Sweet shot. Paul Stankowski also chasing Tiger on 16. Stankowski's approach, serious. Beautiful. Seriously serious. He would make that for an eagle. He shot a 69. Tom Kite played very well. Kite's putt for birdie on 18. Nothing but the cup. He shot a 66. He's four under for the tournament. Constantino Roca also on 18. Flap the wings, that's a birdie. He's six under for the tournament, but Tiger was too much. His approach from 143 yards. Tiger, I am feeling you. And look at this. Tiger Woods. He would knock it to within birdie range. He'd make it to go 13 under. Then on 18, watch this, 115 yards out. It was Tiger's course all day long. Hits, spins back to a foot and a half. He is playing a type of golf that the rest of us are just not familiar with. Tiger Woods shot a 65 on the day, the best round in the tournament so far. A nine-shot lead heading into Sunday. Nine shots. Who's going to catch this guy? Roca is in second place. He is at minus six. The Masters record for best final round ever is a 64. Several golfers hold it. So even if Roca ties the record, he would still finish at minus 14. Tiger's nine-stroke lead after 54 holes surpassed by one. The Masters record set by Raymond Floyd in 1976. He can now take aim at the record nine-stroke victory margin of Jack Nicklaus in 1965 over Arnold Palmer and Gary Player. After this scintillating round by Tiger Woods, Mike Tirico started to head up our golf course Masters coverage. All right, Stuart, thank you, and we welcome you back to Augusta with two-time U.S. Open champion Andy North. You have to excuse us if in the next few minutes we keep going like this. That's what we've been doing for three days. Well, Tiger Woods was coming off what was his worst performance in a PGA Tour event this year, 31st at the Players' Championship. But after a week off and some more impressive shots like you just saw, you know that Tiger Woods had the game in the right direction. After the round of great, great acclaim today, he said that he had a premonition that a good round, a good week was coming up. Obviously, I'm playing well. I'm playing just like I did all last week when I was at home practicing. I shot the 59. So, um, you know, obviously my game was um, rolling around, put that way. I was, it, it's just like um, I, I keep explaining it because in um, every time before an amateur and I had that week off to get ready, I come to the amateur pretty charged and uh, ready to go, and I usually play pretty well. And this year it's the same thing. It's not like I was the last two years when I had uh, you know finals and stuff, and I was just too tired. This year I felt ready to go. Uh, probably actually too ready to go. Uh, when Thursday came around, I was too fired up, but uh, I settled down and uh, I'm playing well now. 
there's a heck of a golf tournament going on if you could just if it had just stayed amateur for another year or two but uh uh you know obviously he he's setting a standard right now it's very difficult for anybody to keep up with he's incredible he is uh doing what we visualized the week uh, before we get here is i'm visualizing blowing the field away and he's going out and doing it and uh you know that's uh, dream golf for for everybody that tees it up this week well i i think everybody i just going home tomorrow is gonna be a lot like i did in thailand when i won by 10 um last day i had a big lead and went on and played even better than i did uh, my first three rounds so that's the mentality i gotta have um it's worked so far the first three rounds i need to go do it again well he does have the largest masters lead after three rounds the birdie on 18 surpassing ray floyd for that mark and he equaled floyd's three round total at the Masters. Well, Andy North, we talked about the driving distance being such a factor. It set up good second shots for Tiger Woods, and he's delivered most every quality second shot. He's driven the ball beautifully, long, and in the fairway most of the time. He's leaving himself so many wedge shots, he's got to take advantage of it, and he's doing that. A good example of his length, the eighth hole, 535 yards, as you can see, straight uphill, a two iron. Very few of the players even get here to two. He's left himself a very nice, makeable eagle putt. Now we go to 11, one of the holes, he actually drove the ball out of the fairway. Notice he's playing a nice, controlled, low hook. This is the shot he's been working on for this week. Great recovery shot, another birdie. And after another huge drive at 18, a sand wedge. That's unbelievable. A lot of spin, ho-hum, another tap in birdie. One of his seven birdies on Saturday with no bogeys, Tiger Woods. 30, what happened? 30 putts today after 29 the first two days. Fuzzy Zeller has the lead with just 82 putts this week. Tiger, a total of 88 putts. And maybe before the TV coverage came on, Andy, you and I were out there at the first hole and the third hole, some key putts that Tiger Woods made. Oh, absolutely. The putt he had at the third hole after birdie in the second, about 10 footer for par, knocked it right on in. That really relieved a little bit of the pressure, and from that point on, it was history. He's tough to catch on Saturday, move day. Who else made a move? We'll talk about the other players in the field a little bit later on in SportsCenter. Right now, back to Linda Cohen. Linda?